Welcome to the Zeeobo Studio Buzz podcast. This is a podcast about knitting and spinning and all kinds of woolly things and about the fiber arts. My name is Doug and I'm coming to you from Albuquerque in the beautiful desert of New Mexico. I am also the dyer behind Zia Wools, in case you haven't um, figured it out, because I've been talking about that quite a bit before. Well, I'm glad I have a few minutes uh, today to spend with you because um, later today I will be setting up for Albuquerque Fiber Arts Fiesta. It's an event where all the guilds, all our local fiber arts guilds are setting up and showing um, beautiful finished items. Uh, big, big guilds are the quilters and also the Las Arañas, the spinners and weavers. So there will be a big exhibit, but also some uh, booths and vendors and I am one of them again uh, this year. It's a, it's a biennial event, so this last happened in 2017 and it won't happen next year. So this is it. And if you are local, I hope you're going to be able to stop by and to visit because it's just really beautiful to see all the wonderful things and I would love to see you. Okay, so I have made a few things and um, I am, you know, I was thinking if I don't uh, record today, I will be traveling as I always do traveling to Germany in the summer. So I'm thinking if I, I, I never, I'm never quite sure how I'm going to be able to record an episode while I'm there. So be aware if you don't hear from me, I couldn't get it figured out all my setup and whatnot, but I will try to um, get an episode out while I'm there as well. So it doesn't, it's too long otherwise, right? Yes, but here we are right now. And let me start by talking about, um, I mean, when I talk about what I have been working on in the past weeks, let me show you this um, finished object that I'm wearing. First, it is another one of my Pino, um, Pinos, which are named, it's a pattern, it's a free pattern on Ravelry called Pino. And it commemorates uh, one of our trails up here on which, go up our beautiful Sandia mountain. And it was actually the first trail and the only trail we ever hiked up uh, to get to the top of the mountain. And we came back down by, by our tram. We have a tram that goes up and down. So, um, so it's kind of special to have a, to have a pattern out that, um, has the name of this trail and uh, if you've watched the previous episodes you've seen me making several of these this is my fourth and i've made a pink one i've made an orange one i've made a bluish gray one and this is the last one because i have you know me i wear a lot of turquoise i have oh turquoise goodness we're in new mexico yes that's yeah it's the country of turquoise the land of turquoise right so um i really needed to have one in this color what can i tell you about it five millimeter needles required you knit in the round and i have made a beaded edge at the cast on, after the cast on, I added one round of beads and also at the cast off edge. And I'm gonna get up and hope you can still see me nicely. 
So the interesting thing is I have knitted this with a Zia Wool's yarn with Sugar Loaf, which is a light fingering, 100% superwash merino. I'm a tight knitter, however, I think with all the pinots that I've made, I've thought loose, loose, loose when I was knitting. And so I think I even knitted this looser than normal because this is the largest of all the pinots that I've made for myself. I mean, three are for me. The bluish gray one is for my daughter. So I made that a little narrower, but this one is for one, a little bit longer, but I'm thinking also a little bit wider. But all of a sudden I had this light bulb moment and I thought how perfect I will be wearing this with my gorgeous shawl pin from Porter Ness Studio. I mean, I'm not going to majorly go with this, but I would highly recommend for you to go and check out her shop because she makes beautiful shawl pins, a little bit of a different spin. I love that. A little bit, yeah, extra. Not your everyday knitting jewelry. And, um, and talking about knitting jewelry, she doesn't only make um, shawl pins, she also makes um, jewel real personal jewelry that relates to knitting. And I love that. I mean, look at this. How beautiful is this? Ah, goodness. Now I'm leaning forward because I'm far away from the camera. Isn't this gorgeous? Absolutely amazing. Yeah, love it. She has others where there are two, two things. This one has one. What do you call these? I have no idea, but I'm sure you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I'm very happy. Pino number four, off the needles, ready to wear, and I'm super excited about it. I have made uh, and finished something else that I told you I was going to try to finish for Five Arts Fiesta to have it in my booth, and that is the little baby cardigan which is also a gift for my friend's little baby girl and here it is yes i said it's finished but it's missing buttons oopsie uh, it looks big when i hold it so close to the camera but it's not I am thinking it will fit fit in fall as I thought and um, there is no pattern for this I hate to make empty promises but honestly this is I like this so very much that I would love to write it up in a pattern maybe with a three sizes or so I'm kind of weird when I do these things because this one I really totally winged it. I, the length of the sleeves and the body, I eyeballed for what was, how can I say, felt like it's proportionally right, I think. I think what I've, I started by knitting this top down with the collar in seed stitch. I increased some stitches for the button band. I did my raglan increases, picked up some stitches, made some new stitches under the arms. But here is, so then I was really thinking, uh, I really knitted it as long as I thought was right in terms of proportionally to the width of it. And the same with the sleeves. Plus I'm, then I picked these numbers of rounds that are kind of nice numbers to me. I know, kind of weird, but it works. With this one, I think this is right proportionally. 
Now I'm really super curious to see how it fits the little girl or when it fits her. And if I guessed right that this is going to be kind of like a, a 6 to 12 months size where you can start off by um, with the sleeves rolled up and then let those down. The needles I use are 3.5 millimeter size and the yarn I used is my uh, Zia Wool's Roadrunner in a custom colorway and that's a singles yarn, a merino superwash and I think one skein has 400 yards. Can you tell if I clearly I'm very competent to talk about my yarns. <laughs> um, yes, yardage 400 or 435. I'm not quite sure. But perfect one skein garment. And this is how much I have left. So I haven't weighed it. I thought at first, hmm, that's just enough for a hat, but actually I don't think so. It does not feel like it's a lot. Yes, and I'm, I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but I love old vintage things. So when I come across something like this little dress and it's cheap, I buy it. And I probably found this in a thrift store for a dollar or so and of course to combine it with a cardigan so I'm gonna bring this to the booth at Fiber Arts Fiesta today and um, so I thought this would be so nice for a display to combine it and it even had a little hanger stuff like this I have them on my in the house uh, studio just on the wall just to remind me of the beautiful things that um, women make and have made in the past I'm pretty sure this is handmade yeah so but I wanted to talk to you about the pattern I would love to write that up so I'm thinking three sizes there's one thing that I have struggled with and I don't know if the problem that I had was caused by the yarn or by something I did because, and I can show you what it is. I will have to figure this one out. Do you see this? So I've come down with the collar. Then I added these stitches and where I added those stitches, that last stitch kind of is too loose for my taste. It bothers me. So my at the end of my row, I slipped the last stitch purlwise, and then I knit the first stitch of the next row through the back loop, which makes this nice edge. But I don't know if that has something to do with it and if it might be better if I knit the last stitch and knit the first stitch of the row as well. I will have to experiment with that. And on the close-up you may be seeing that the slight variation is also enhanced by some neon speckles. Love how that yarn turned out. Good. Those were my two finished objects. And next is spinning that I have done in the last week. I have picked up some fiber which has been in my stash for a some Good bit. Hold on. I try to open the bag down here. It's a kid mohair, which is not, which is just dyed in the locks. 
And I took this to the spinning demo at the New Mexico Fiber Crawl, where I went, you know, I'll, I talked to you that I went to the, to hang out at the kickoff party at the yarn store at Knob Hill, and then I went back on Sunday to do demo spinning, and I spun one skein, and I spun, actually a few days later at home, I spun another skein. And these are my two skeins. As you can hopefully see, they are singles yarns, and I just adore this color. With that rusty orange in it. So this is one skein that has about two ounces and 115 yards. And the other one, I seems like I spun this ever so slightly thicker and because it it's same same singles yarn but it has more yardage i mean no it has more weight but the same yardage but these will be at fiesta for sale so unless someone really wants to knit a sweater which i don't think anybody would um, that won't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. I, what did I want to tell you about this? So it is definitely not my favorite spin. If you're a spinner, I bet you relate. You want this smooth, thoughtless process where you have, you know, you can't, don't need to, you just go. This one, you need to pay attention that you don't over process, that you don't draft too thin, that you don't smooth out too much, because you want this. You want these little locks to peek out. You want to keep the character of the mohair locks because that's how it's processed. It's not processed and you want to keep that for the character of your yarn so that was fun in the product not my favorite spin probably that's why it's still in my stash or it was still in my stash but um, of course when it's done it's just beautiful it is a singles yarn as I said and the way I um, finish it is I I wash it and then I hang it from a hook and I put a little bit of a weight on the bottom with another hook so it does not, so the skein doesn't fly on itself. And the, um, the yeah, you just, I just never, I, I just want to make, I always make sure that the weight that I put on is not too too heavy because I don't want the yarn to stretch out massively just a little bit so those are the skeins of spinning I have not other yeah yeah that was all the spinning I have done however as I told you I was at the um, spinning demo and there were a few uh, local uh, friends and uh, one of them um, Ariel is the owner of a, a farm and she has she breeds sheep too and she has she brought fiber so when I saw that she had some beautiful gray Shetland fiber I thought oh my gosh Shetland half half stretcher you know where that goes of course I changed my mind but yeah I, I want to make many halves not just one so I haven't started spinning, but I have purchased Shetland fiber. So let me show you. Sorry about the rustling. I have a whole bag. I think I have 14 or 15 ounces of this beautiful fluff. And I can't wait to spin it 
again, I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of continuous spinning time where I didn't want to start spinning this and then having to quit going out of town and then coming back back and having to think of how did I spin I can't remember and maybe doing it differently so this will be a spin later in the summer I feel like I want to spin all the things anyways so I'm looking forward to that and I'm definitely going to have enough of that oh and guess what remember I told I showed you the pale blue yarn where I said I feel like I've already spun some of this yes I had spun some of it I found three skeins I will show them to you another time I just can't recall where I put them hold on who am I kidding I knew I, once I thought about it, I knew I was going to forget next time. Anyways, I mean, I think I'll remember, but I know I won't remember. These are the two skeins that I made from bats. Showed you. And then, look how much I already spun. I almost fall over, fell over when I saw that. Oh, it's crazy. Let me get them out of the bag to properly show you. That's how I roll. Oh my gosh. One cast on, yes. And then I forgot. I have this much, do you believe it? 4.1 ounces, 4.1 ounces, 360 yards, 346 yards. And it's kind of interesting to see from a distance, they kind of look the same. At least they do to me. Only when you go close up, closer up, you can tell that this one is the more blended one versus these being the white, pale blue, white, pale blue spin ones. I mean, where the roving looked like that and this one is probably roughly the same amount let's see hmm. can't find can't find the amount only found another mini skein and then I can show you what my original intent was I wanted to make a sweater with this beautiful pattern and I will show you the gorgeous sweater and then I'm probably gonna look over it again and see if I won't still make it because I mean I could I don't know maybe it's enough yarn I mean that's a lot of yarn that I have. and it was the fog cutter by baby cocktails I just love everything about this Isn't that Thea Coleman? Baby cocktails. I don't know. It's just such a nice sweater. I will have to read up on this again and see what the yardage requirements are and make my decision. <clears throat> Would be a nice travel project but now I have three skeins that work together oh no three that go together and a fourth one that doesn't I could put this at the kind of like knit two sorry about the break again I didn't realize I had not deleted the trash on my phone so 
<laughs> to undo that so I could continue filming. Okay, well, my point was about the sweater. I mean, I could, I could make the sweater and finish the sleeves in the yarn that spun from the bat versus the rest of the sweater from the dyed robing, which was kind of natural and very pale blue sections. I will see, I will see. That would be a nice, it would be a nice vacation project. And I haven't, have I knitted with my hand spun yarn recently? Can't recall, nothing big at least. So I shall make this decision. I mean, check it out. I even have the needles ready. <laughs> I will also, I am planning, and I've talked about this so much. I just have not picked it up yet. I have put it next to my spot where I sit in the evenings and knit I that's where I put my the project bag which is actually one of my favorites because if you didn't know it this is me love my coffee I'm the coffee diva and barista and it looks like on the inside and a handle with a velvet a ribbon that's how I make my bags it's a Zeowul's bag where's my label I probably made this for myself and skipped on the label right away okay let me show you what's in there it is my beautiful beautiful white out this is where I am right now. It's big and, sh what's the right word? Narrow, shallow, kind of, kind of not with the B coming down too deep, I think. Oops. So I had put this aside because I thought I want to have the brain space to finish up um, when I finish that. And <sighs> another break. The stucco man says hi. <laughs> he doesn't, but that's why I had to take another break. No break for you, though. So we were talking about my shawl, the white out by Melanie Berg. And I am ready to pick this back up. Let me show you how it looks like. This is what I'm working on. W working with on the lace, for the lace. And this is how it will look like. I am ready to pick this back up but as you know this is how it's like when you finish two uh, two things you can cast on whatever you want right and I am already gearing up for my next cast on which is this beauty and I showed you the pattern before it's the drifter by Tammy Gore and this is a pattern that can be done with two colors or with three colors and I cannot even begin to tell you how much I love two new colorways that I came up with in the recent uh, week after I talked to you last this is one of them And this is the other. 
May I introduce you to Underdog and Chipotle. So these two together will go into the drifter and well, I thought I was going to wind these up last night and cast on, but I was working late to finish the baby cardigan and that's what I ended up doing. I finished the baby cardigan, wove in the ends, threw it in the wash water, laid it out to block and did not do a very good job of blocking that, but I didn't care so much at that point. I was just tired and ready to go to sleep and to, had to have it done. So today this is dry and this is the next thing that will be wound and which will be cast on. I am super excited. I just love the undertones of turquoise that are in this and how it picks up with this dirty, rusty color, the orange tones in the Chipotle. Love it. Also, I told you that my friend who gifted me the half stretcher had, um, you know, when I asked him, do you want a pair of socks? He said, no, but my wife, I'm sure would love a pair of socks. Now, this is a friend who I know loves orange, just like I do. And so what I did was I came up with a blazing orange yellowish colorway for socks. And this is it. It has the name One World and I dyed it up on my Taos base, which is a Corydale Superwash nylon blend. And there's just one more of this, which will go with me to Fiber Arts Fiesta. It has slight speckles, nothing dramatic, lots of yellow and orange and neon colors. And I, in that same spirit of yellow and orange, I have to show you this. You know that Melody was here and I have already owned two of her pattern boards. If you want one, you need to get in touch with her because she, I don't think she has them listed in her shop right now, but I know she has a few in stock that um, would probably be ready to go at some point. So these are the pattern minders. You put your, no, this way, this is how it sits. And then you attach your pattern and you have it in front of you on the table. And I own already two of this. Here's our cute tag. Oh, I'm sneezing. So Melody's designs, and um, I own two, and when I saw this, I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful. It's so 70s, I love the 70s look of this fabric. And so we did a little art swap this time. She picked a skein of yarn and I got one of these. Yes, and that's gonna go with my drifter, I think, yes. And that's it for today, friends. We're through. I am excited that I got a few minutes to chat with you. And I hope it's not too crazy with all the chopped up bits and pieces um, that this will be made of. And um, I hope you're all having a wonderful start into the summer. Happy travels if you are going somewhere. And happy staying at home if you're not. And most of all, happy knitting until I see you again. Bye-bye.